Hello, good people. Uh, this is Muhammad Ishtiag Islam, software, uh, working as a software engineer in Apps Code. Today, uh, we are going to discuss about a comprehensive guide to workload, uh, workload backup and restore using QA Stash. And we will give a quick demo. And finally, we will keep a QA session. Here is the developed contents of our today's webinar. Uh, at first, we will discuss about what is a uh, workload. Then we will talk about what we can, uh, what can we back up, uh, unveiling enhancements, uh, streamlined workload backup process, and work workload restore procedures. And in the end, we will keep the QA session. Okay, what is workload? Uh, a workload is an application that is running in Kubernetes uh, that manages a pod or a set of pods on our behalfs. Kubernetes uh, provides uh, several built-in uh, workload resources like deployment, uh, replica set, stateful set, daemon set, etc. What can we backup? So we can backup some directories or some individual files. <clears throat> uh, let's uh, see the enhancement we introduced in uh, uh, QStash. So at first, I am uh, I am uh, discussing about the uh, model we are using to take backup or restore. So if you are uh, you have used uh, stash before, then you should know that uh, workload is uh, backup or restore via uh, sidecar model. So mm, some people uh, do not prefer to inject uh, sidecar. Uh, in their workload. So we introduced a job model to backup and restore in QBStash. Then uh, flexibility in passing parameters and uh, target volumes. Uh, we were not privileged enough to provide params and, uh, in the in, Q, in stash. So we uh, introduced parameter, uh, parameter passing in QBStash. Uh, you can see the parameter definition in add-on and can pass the parameters in backup configuration. Then the target volume should be provided in stash, but in QBStash, we can omit this field. Then simplification in restoring backup components. In uh, stash, we uh, introduce um, some names for components like uh, in uh, stateful set, we uh, name every pod like pod one, pod two, pod three, so, so that you can uh, say the name of the component to restore beforehand. In uh, stash, we handle this feature by using rules that was more complex system. So it simply, uh, we have simplified this process. Then we have introduced a optimal method to restore the prior snapshot. In Stash, you have to find out the uh, snapshot ID from backend, uh, the, the, so, or you can restore the latest snapshot. To uh, restore the previous snapshot, you have to go through all the snapshot you have backup. That was a tedious process. So we have uh, introduced a optimal process to restore uh, this, uh, 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 this restore system uh, by just providing the snapshot name. Now let's see the backup flow, uh, uh, <clears throat> backup flow of uh, workload in QBStash. User will create backup storage and uh, the operator will watch the backup storage and uh, it will uh, initialize the backend, then create backup configuration and operator will watch the backup configuration, then create the repository and watch it. Then oper give stash operator will create cron job and the cron job will create backup session depending on the schedule. And operator will watch the backup session and, and in the same time, it will create a snapshot. And the number of snapshot will depend on the number of repositories you are used in uh, backup configuration. Then operator will resolve the add-on and create the backup jobs. Here, the backup jobs uh, 
it, here it, the name uh, specifies that the job will be multiple. So the number of backup jobs will depend on the number of replicas we will use in the target workload. And then the backup data will be stored in the backend repository. Now let's see the restore flow for workload in QStash. User will create restore session. The operator will watch the restore session and pause the backup configuration. Here we have to notice one thing that in stash, we, uh, the user have to uh, pause the backup configuration by himself. But in QBStash, the QBStash operator will be responsible for pausing the um, backup configuration. Then operator will create uh, the uh, the operator will resolve the add-on and create restore jobs. The number of restore jobs also depend on the uh, target workload that needs to be restored. And uh, the uh, restore data will be uh, gained from the backend repository. So let's dive in a uh, live demo and let's see uh, how the back, uh, backup and restore work for workload in QBStash. So uh, at first we have to um, apply backup uh, storage. Uh, for simplicity, I have already uh, applied backup storage in my cluster. So let's see uh, the backup storage here. Here I'm using GCS, that means Google uh, Cloud Storage and uh, the bucket name is QBStash. Okay, uh, let's see our bucket at first. This is our bucket uh, in the in initial phase. We can see the prefix demo and the metadata is stored here and nothing else. Okay, uh, here uh, I have to uh, say, uh, I have to say the things I am watching here, the uh backup configuration here in this terminal i am watching backup session here is snapshots and here re retention uh, re uh restore session and here the pods in demo namespace okay so i uh want to uh, take backup of uh stateful set so let's see the stateful set uh which we want to take backup Okay, this is the stateful sets YML uh, that we want to take backup. So here we can see uh, we are using a source data volume and here is the mount path source data. And uh, we are storing in this mount path uh, data.txt and in this uh, file, uh, we are storing the pod name. Let's apply this YML. Okay, here we can see the ports are, uh, ports are in running state. Okay, uh, so let's see if the data is available or not. Okay, we can see uh, in the sample STS0 pod have the Mm, pod name uh, data in its uh, source data mount path and we want to take backup this file. So to take backup this uh, workload, we want uh, we have to apply backup configuration. So let's see the backup configuration manifest. <clears throat> Here we have a uh, written uh, we have written the target information here and here we have uh, provided the backend information here is the session here in this session we uh, we have provided the schedule of two minutes so that the backup will be triggered every two minutes here i have provided the repository uh, i have given the repository name demo storage one and 
the directory I have provided uh, data sample STS the name uh, I have uh, keep the name uh, according to the stateful set name and then uh, I have provided the target volume which I have uh, I need to back up but uh, I remind you that uh, this field can be omitted in that case the QVistas operator will be responsible to mount this volume and here we are giving the parameter so by passing this parameter we are saying that I want to take back up this path okay and this path it must be provided this uh, we can see the add-on that uh, this path is required I mean this parameter is always required okay let's apply the backup configuration here we can see the backup configuration is applied and its phase is not ready uh, in this meantime the backup configuration uh, create uh, after applying the backup configuration the repository is uh, created so uh, after creating the repository the backup configuration phase uh, converted to ready phase okay so uh, it will take backup in every two minutes so we need to wait uh, two minutes by this time i want to show you the repository state in our bucket so in here you can see the repository has initialized so the uh, directory data sample SCS is created and the repository YML is uploaded here. So let's wait for uh, for triggering the backup session and in this meantime we can see the add-on uh, that I was talking about the parameter section. Okay. We are using this add-on and we can see here that the parameter definitions. So I have used this parameter paths and it is required to true. So I have all, um, always I have to provide this path to, um, uh, to validate the uh, backup uh, configuration. If I don't provide this path, the backup configuration will be in invalid phase. Okay. We have, uh, we can see that uh, our backup session is triggered. So it is in, uh, in running phase and uh, the backup job has created, uh, three backup job has created. And uh, for backup jobs, I can see that uh, for every replicas of a stateful set, there are corresponding backup job. So uh, the replicas number was three. So our backup job number was uh, is three. and for his backup job there is running a corresponding pod okay i can see the backup session is in complete uh, succeed phase so uh, i can say the backup is com uh, succeeded and uh, we can also see the snapshot here uh, we can uh, see also see the um, uh, restrict data here to by get the snapshot details okay in here we can see the components uh, here uh, we stored three components and each components have its uh, backup data here we have used uh, restrict drivers so the driver name duration integrity the path the path represent where the backup uh, encrypted data is stored and uh, in the backend so this is the backend path uh, mainly and the face it is succeeded for this component and the restrict stats we can see here the host path host path means which path we have taken backup so source data path we have taken backup and the id of the snapshot size upload and the size of the total backup of this component <clears throat> we also can see it here
here uh, we can see in the repository here it is the session name these are the components i have taken backup port zero represent the stateful sets num uh, the first part of stateful set and here is the uh, encrypted data we have taken backup so uh, our backup is successful by, uh, by using kubistash now we want to uh, restore this backup so we want to uh, we have to you uh, apply the restore session uh, at, before that we let's see the restore session yml so i want to restore uh, the stateful set uh, in the same stateful set so i keep the same name uh, okay uh, why i want to take the uh, i want to restore in the same uh, stateful set i will uh, discuss it later and uh, here i have given the snapshot uh, id latest mean the latest id i can provide it uh, the if i want to pre, uh, take re, uh, i want to restore previous uh, some previous data then i can uh, give the snapshot id here a snapshot id means the snapshot name is this is snapshot name so Uh, I want to uh, restore the latest one, so I provide latest. And here are the components I want to restore. Okay, so I have uh, told that I want to uh, keep uh, restore in the same uh, stateful set uh, because I want to force the. Uh, stateful set data uh, then i want to restore the uh, validate data in, uh, valid data in this stateful set uh, let's force the data first okay uh, for this i want to uh, pass uh, i want to pause the backup configuration at first let's pause this one okay Let's exact in the okay. Let's uh, provide some random value here now if i want to see the value oh sorry okay we can say the value is corrupted so we want to uh, restore the valid data here to do that i want to uh, corrupt the all of the ports so let's corrupt all the ports here
okay uh, let's apply the restore session here Here we can see the restore session is applied and it is in running phase. It created two uh, backup jobs uh, because uh, we have provided two components. We can see it here. We have provided two components. We want to uh, restore the port zero and port two. So it has created uh, two backup jobs for port 0 and port 2 and we can see the data in port 1 and uh, port 0 and port 2 so that we can ensure that the restore is succeeded okay uh, I have sh uh, showed that uh, the data I uh, I have corrupted the data and after restore we can see the previous data that was uh, uh, held in, in the initial phase the data is back so uh, the restore was is successful and we can also see the corrupted data in pod one as we do not uh, restore the pod one so let's see in pod one which data is stored here yeah the, here is the also uh, here is the data that uh, that is corrupted as we uh, didn't uh, restore this one so the corrupted data is just here okay so uh, this was the process uh, to uh, backup and restore workload by QStash. It was uh, shown for only stateful set. We can also show it for a uh, back uh, de a demo set and uh, the demo set YML is here. I want to show also for this for on demo set and we want to apply this demo set YML. <clears throat> Sorry, here we have we are using uh, this host path type uh, volume, and uh, we are uh, using test data as in the mount path. We are use uh, we are keeping the data .txt, and the data in that file is test data. So let's uh, apply this demo set YML. We can see here the demo set is created and let's take back up. Uh, okay, let's see what is in demo set first. It's a directory, right? Okay, here is the test data, and we want to take backup of this data. Let's take backup. So, for this one, we want to uh, apply this back uh, backup configuration for the demo set. We we can see the target is symbol demo, and uh, the backend information and the session session information here. And here you can uh, notice that we didn't uh, provide any target uh, target volume or target volume mount path. So it is the responsibility of the uh, QStash operator that it will uh, mount the uh, volumes that are not uh, read-only type or ephemeral type volumes obviously so they will uh, the QStash operator will uh, mount that type of volume in the back, uh, backup jobs so let's apply this one
here we can see a uh, simple daemon backup configuration has applied and it is ready okay let's wait for triggering the backup session and we can see in uh in the back end here is the sample daemon repository and here is nothing till now Okay, backup session for the sample backup demo is created and it is in running phase. And for this one, the uh, there is only one backup uh, job is created as we have only one node in cluster and one uh, demo pod in the cluster. So let's wait for its succeed phase okay the backup session is succeed uh let's pause this backup for now okay and let's see what happened in the back end in the backend, we can see the repository is created for uh, demo set and uh, the component name here, the name is used, the node name of the uh, demo set. Uh, that means the pod is created on the node and the node name is used as the component name for demo set component. Okay, now we want to restore this one. Mm, before restore we want to uh, corrupt the data so let's corrupt it Okay, we have given some random data here. Let's save this. So here's the corrupted data. We want to uh, restore uh, this uh, demo set uh, with the uh, valid data. So let's run the restore session. Before running the restore session, applying the restore session, we want to show you the uh, restore session YML. Here we can see the target information, the data source, data source in the data source, we are using the snap, latest snapshot and the add-on for workload add-on. Okay. Let's apply the restore session. <clears throat> Here we can see the restore session is uh, applied and it is in running phase. Okay, the restore session is succeeded. Let's see if the data is, uh, if the valid data is back or not. Okay, we can get, uh, we can see that uh, the valid data is here. So the restore is successful. 
here uh, i want to say that uh, i have uh, used the same daemon set but you can also uh, create different daemon set or different stateful set as you wish uh, which workload you want to restore in that case you have to provide the uh, different name or the, which is the daemon set or stateful set you want to uh, take uh, you want to restore uh, that name should be provided here so it was the demo and uh, uh, that's all. So it uh, after that, uh, we have the QA session. If you have any question regarding our uh, workload backup and restore, you can ask. Okay, I think there is no question. Uh, so uh, that's all from my side. And thank you for being with us for this session.